Canon just released the EOS M50 Mark II, but is this camera right for you? That rhymed. Wow. Apparently I'm a Dr. Seuss commercial, but really I'm a wedding and portrait photographer and Canon explorer of light, but that does not mean I have biased opinions or I lie about crap. I'm just gonna tell you what this camera's all about and who I think it's for. Now, I've had the advantage of having the EOS M50 Mark II for the past few weeks. I was able to use it in a variety of different scenarios and personally, not only do I think it's super cute that it comes in white too, but it's a very functional, easy to use camera. And it has a specific demographic. Number one, a lot of power is packed into this camera. This camera is gonna be your lightweight, compact, checks off a ton of boxes type camera. If you are a food photographer, an Instagrammer, product photographer of any kind, you're probably going to like the image quality that this gives you. If you're a vlogger or a YouTuber, you're definitely going to like some of the upgrades that this camera has that is very specific for you. Canon really put some thought into how they can make this camera better than the predecessor, the EOS M50. As you might know, if you are here on my YouTube channel, I try very hard not to redo a list of specs that you could just go to Adorama and read for yourself. I want to give you the practical use for this camera so you can decide if you should upgrade or if this is the camera for you. So that's the angle that we are taking. But of course, first let's get some specs out of the way. Some of the foundational specs that you're probably interested in. This is a 24.1 megapixel camera with a CMOS sensor and Digic 8 processor. That might mean nothing to you, but essentially 24 megapixels, that's great. You can print something as big as this jammy right behind me, which is a 24 by 36. You're gonna have plenty of megapixels for that. You also have the CMOS sensor that supports dual pixel autofocus. What the heck does that mean? Well, it works a lot better than the old school focusing systems and you're not gonna have a hard time trying to focus where you want to. More on that later because there's more autofocus improvements that I really wanna get into that's gonna help you out, especially if you're photographing people of any kind, including yourself. I'm going to jump in here to let you know that all of the photos that you are seeing were edited with my Vanessa Joy presets and production pack. I had a lot of fun messing around with some of the black and white presets like faded and punchy as well as the color ones bright and colorful fresh and clean and a few more now because this was a pre-production camera the photos that you're seeing here are jpegs i could not shoot in raw could not process the raw files it's just one of those things when you use cameras before they're actually released but the presets and tools are performing beautifully. And for this set of photos, I actually applied whatever preset I thought looked good and then went up into the productivity tools and made a few adjustments. Things like lightening up the shadows and for the food photography here, I definitely added some sharpness and of course went over and added a little bit of texture and clarity. You can grab these presets and productivity tools, including the local adjustment brushes that help me retouch, which you don't see here because I'm not retouching my kids' faces. <laughs> but you can grab them at presets.breatheyourpassion.com or in the link below of this YouTube video. Thanks so much for watching. Let's get back into it. This cute little camera does have a built-in flash, but it also has a hot shoe, so you can attach other accessories to it, other flashes, in case you wanna do something like bounce flashing, which you can see me doing with my daughter right here. It has one SD card slot, which you can find next to the battery. You'll be able to shoot RAW, compact RAW, and JPEG, along with 4K video, which again, something that Canon was keeping in mind for vloggers or really anybody doing anything social media it also has vertical video capabilities in here so well you can do some really nice TikToks. <laughs> I'm just kidding vertical video is everywhere honestly to the annoyance of some but it's definitely something that you want to see in a camera the main thing that I think most photographers are really gonna like about this upgrade at least from the difference between the previous m50 and this m50 mark ii is the autofocus performance it is wildly improved you are able to focus much better on subjects that are further away so for example your kid is running around and you're trying to take a photograph of them this is going to catch right onto their eye much sooner even though they're further away than the previous eos m50 camera 
but that's not it. When you are shooting in video mode, it has AI servo capabilities. What does that mean? When you flip this around like this and you go ahead to video mode, which is available in auto or manual, and you, let's choose mode, just go with auto, which is usually what people do. All right, when you go to shoot yourself like this, it's gonna find your face, and no matter if you turn around and you're talking here or you're talking right here, maybe I should record this. I don't think there's a card in here, so I can't. It's going to find you and track and move with you. This is key if you are self-filming at all. In fact, I'm using it right now. I am alone right here in this room, and I'm recording myself with the Canon EOS R, and that has AI servo focusing with, of course, the head, eye, and face detection. This one has face and eye detection, and it works really well. It gives you the confidence to be able to film yourself or really anyone else and trust the camera to do the focusing for you. There are 143 zones for autofocus points with images and 113 for video. It's enough, it's gonna find you, it's gonna focus, and it's going to do a great job. In addition to having AI servo, of course you have manual focus as well as touch and drag and one shot. So everything is covered here. You're gonna have an easy time photographing your kids when they're running around. So no more, hey, sit still, stop it, sit, smile, yeah, right? No more of that. Let them play, photograph them playing, and this thing will keep up. This is a mirrorless camera, but it's not full frame. It's about a one to six crop with an APS-C sensor. What does that mean? Well, I have a lens on here. This is a 15 to 45, and at 15 millimeters, it's going to be okay photographing people without a ton of distortion. The reason why we have some of these sensors like this are because you can use these itty bitty lenses. They're nice, lightweight, and compact. Like I mentioned, this was a 15 to 45. Now it is a variable f-stop, meaning it's not a prime lens. But because this camera is coming in to a mirrorless line that is well-established with the EF-M series lenses, and yes, you can get an adapter so that you can use EF lenses as well. Sorry, RF lenses are not compatible with this camera at all. But you're stepping into a well-established lens line. Well, you'll be able to shoot with pretty much anything that you need. For me, one of my favorites with this camera, especially when I was shooting details, like you see here with the food photography, I really loved using the 32 1.4 lens and the Prime 22 lens. They were perfect and a little bit reminded me of my 50 millimeter, my 85 millimeter that I love so, so much. When Canon gave it to me, I'm not gonna lie. Yes, I'm a Canon Explorer of Light. I tend to like things Canon, but when they told me about this camera, I'm like, oh, cute. Like, it's a, a little dinky camera for, you know, moms. But I have to say, when I was using this camera to shoot food photography, I was wildly impressed with the detail and the clarity and the color coming out of this little camera. The food photography that you see here is from a shoot for V Flat World, they've come out with duo boards or coming out with duo boards and we got that first peek here. And I decided to use this. This was a paid job. I was getting paid to take these pictures and I went for this camera. It is beautifully detailed. I had no problem with it and obviously super easy to use, very lightweight, easy held above my head. And of course you've got the LCD screen that tilts and swivels and really does whatever you need so you can shoot wherever you need and it's not hurting your back. The ISO range or ISO range for stills is 100 to 25,600 and for video it does stop at 12,800. To be honest, I didn't test it that high. I really didn't need to with the circumstances that I was shooting so everything worked pretty well without me having to push my ISO capabilities so I do apologize. I did not test that before filming this video. In one shot autofocus, this can burst at 10 frames per second. What does that mean? That means it's gonna keep up with moving objects in front of you, whether you're using this for photographing soccer games, little bit of sports, or even wildlife, 10 frames per second, not that bad. The sync speed is 1 200th of a second, in case you're using it with flash. And the camera can shoot as fast as 1 4,000th of a second. So if you're shooting with some natural light, you're gonna be able to freeze that action with no problem. Let's get into another new feature that is definitely different from the predecessor. The EOS M50 Mark II has clean HDMI out. 
That means if you are plugging into the micro HDMI port that it has here, you can have no info display overlay on top of the video. I was able to plug a Ninja recorder right here and get a clean shot. You're also able to use that Ninja recorder, the external display and record at the same time. Speaking of recording, using videos or maybe even using that HDMI out, this little darling streams directly to YouTube. Now there are a few caveats and they really have to do with YouTube, not with the Canon or this camera. You want to make sure you check out that disclaimer. I believe it's something along the lines of you have to have a thousand uh, subscribers in order to stream to YouTube, but that's a YouTube rule. So obviously that means this camera has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Some of the other ways that you would use that would be, well, pulling it to your phone. You can easily use the Canon Connect app to take photos or video from the camera and bring them to your phone, whether it's TikTok videos, whether you took a picture of someone else's kid and you want to send it to them really fast. It's a great way to connect and make sure that pictures aren't just living digitally or living on a camera. And from there, you can transfer them pretty easily to a place like Google Photos. It's just another way to have backup, have them online and have even more accessibility with the images that you take. Now we know that this camera is nice and lightweight, compact, as are all of the EFM lenses that can work with this. And remember, you can use an adapter to use the EF lens line as well. So not only is this light in your hands, but it's going to be light in your wallet because this camera is not meant for professional photographers. You're not paying professional photographer prices. I don't actually know how much it costs right now when I am recording it because nobody told me, but you can check out the link in the description below. And of course that will head you to Adorama, which is my camera store of choice. And you can see how much it costs. If it's anything like the M50, it's not gonna break the bank and it'll leave you some room to getting some lenses. Canon also came out with a really great crossbody sling bag. And that bag, I have to say, works really well with this camera system. You are able to put a lot in that bag. And I don't know if it's a girl thing, but I really enjoy crossover bags that fit nice and comfy, light, not hurting my shoulders. And this new sling bag definitely fit that bill. I think I went through all of the main things. So let's just recap this camera it's not for professional photographers. I do not recommend as a wedding photographer, you take this to a wedding. That might seem obvious, but just in case it's not, let's go over that. <laughs> this camera is meant as a great travel camera. It would be a travel camera that I would use if I went on vacation with my family. It's great for hobbyists and amateurs. It is absolutely a especially for the price for anyone shooting product photography and by products it doesn't have to mean like you're getting paid I mean product photography as in you know and I have to sneeze ah, please hold <laughs> by product photography I mean you're an influencer you're an Instagrammer and people send you products like this NARS lip gloss and you have to film yourself using it and then you have to take a photo of it somewhere cute like you know on my pillow that's pretty cute. Yeah. All right. That's considered product photography and this is going to do a really great job with it. I mean, look how close I was able to get to these pancakes. You were definitely going to be able to show off any product that any brand sends you. So this is good for uh, product photographers, like I said, influencers, and of course, anyone using video, especially if you are filming yourself. This is nice, lightweight. If you're a travel vlogger, blogger, photographer, it's going to be easy to pack this camera. Of course, it's great, like I mentioned, for photographing kids. So moms like me and moms who are also not professional photographers are gonna like not only the ease of use of this camera, how light it is, but how easy it is to adapt other lenses to it. If you are into cooking and baking and all of those things, this is definitely a camera that's going to be easy to use. It's gonna elevate and you know level up your photography and make it stand out amongst all of the other food photographers and vloggers. It comes in white and black, which is really kind of cute. And this lens right here, the silver one, there is a matching black one that goes really nicely on the black camera. So you get to make your camera even fit your brand, which if you are one of those vloggers, influencers, Instagrammers, I know you like that just as much as I do. 
So that's what I think of the EOS M50 Mark II. I did get a chance to use the M50, but I've certainly used this camera a ton more, so that's why you don't see a ton of comparisons between the two. And all of the pictures and video clips that you have seen throughout this video have been taken with a pre production EOS M50 Mark II. I think we got it. Check it out for yourself. If you have any experience with this camera or even with the M50, I would absolutely love to hear your questions, concerns, comments, and then I can tell you about my related experience shooting with the successor to the M50. I'm Vanessa Joy. Make sure you hit subscribe, ring the bell so you don't miss a thing here on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching.